Welcome to another pixelflife.com video tutorial. In today's lesson, we're going to learn how to create an awesome wallpaper. We're going to be doing more of a um, uh, retro look to this image. Um, so go ahead and create a new document, 1280 by 720. And we're going to put that at 300 dots per inch. And leave the background contents at white. Hit OK. Then double click that background layer. Hit OK. Double click it again. Go to your gradient overlay. Now when you get to here on the dark part, you're going to want to go over here and select kind of a mid kind of blue. And then on the light side, you're going to want to go back to that same blue tone and select one that's just a little bit lighter towards the white side. Now I'm going to move this over. You can see here we have a nice gradient that's kind of going down. I want to go ahead and up the scale to two, uh, 150%. I also want to click on reverse. and get rid of align with layer and now we're going to go ahead and put this to radial and you'll see here it now creates a nice like fogged effect right here in the middle if you put this to 180 it actually does it even more as you can see here um, and I'll leave that up to you to decide which way you want to do it um, just because it, it's easier that way so after you've figured it out hit OK and we now have our background created now I'm going to go ahead and create a new full um, layer and what I'm going to do is simply go into my ellipse tool here and go ahead and make sure my color fill is set to black and then I want to simply drag out a circle and once that's done I'm then going to hold down shift again and drag out another one and it's going to be a little bit bigger and then I'm going to go back holding down the shift key and drag out another one and they don't have to be perfectly aligned, but just somewhat kind of in this order. I'm then going to put another one here and another one here. Now, once that's done, you can see here we have this shape. And if I click on it, the circles are still shown. And that's very important because we're going to want those circles for later on. Um, let's go ahead and make that one there a little bit bigger. And that looks pretty good there. So with that, we're going to go ahead and double click this layer. Now this is where it's going to get a little tricky. Uh, first thing we're going to do is go to color overlay and make it white. What we're doing is we're making clouds. So first thing we're doing is hitting color overlay. Next thing we're going to do is hit drop shadow. And we're going to go ahead and make this be this blue color that we have. Go ahead and put the distance up. Make it come directly down from 90 degrees. As you can see here on the bottom. And we'll up that size to about 20 or a distance and then the size we'll go ahead and up that to make it kind of soften it a little bit to about 18 around there and you can play with the different filters here if you want um, but I'm just going to leave it alone for now I might come back and mess with it a little bit later next I'm going to go ahead and do a bevel and emboss and I'm going to go ahead and increase the size of that and I'm going to go ahead and set both of these to black Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and let's set these both to the this dark darker blue color as well. Just get them somewhat close. They don't have to be perfectly close. And we'll go ahead and set this to color dodge and color dodge. Or actually, we'll leave that one alone. And we'll just put the opacity down a little bit. Go ahead and take off, use global light. And we're going to put this. You just want to kind of make it kind of soft over here so you can definitely see it, but you definitely want it to be soft. Um, kind of like that, give or take. And again, it's one of those things you just got to kind of figure it out. We'll then go ahead and do an inner shadow on that. Go ahead and bring that down to the bottom at negative 90 degrees. Turn off, use global light. And go back to drop shadow. Turn that off as well. And we'll go ahead and make this bigger. Up that size. We're going to go ahead and make this be that light blue color that we started off with. So it's somewhere around in here. You just want it to be kind of light on the top. You don't want it to be really, really, really pronounced. 
and I'll use that contour there and set that opacity down just a little bit. Let's go back to the bevel and emboss. Make that intensity a little bit more. And then I also want to soften this up all the way. Because I just want that to be nice and soft. And I'm going to go ahead and change that position to where it's straight down, kind of like that. Now if I hit OK and I click off of this layer, you can see here that we have a nice looking cloud. It's very cartoonish, uh, almost like Pixar style, which is really cool. Um, and honestly, we could stop here, but this is Pixel for Life, so we're definitely not going to do that. What we're going to do is go ahead and grab our elliptical marquee tool. We're then going to duplicate this layer. And then when we're onto this next layer, the reason we wanted these circles to stay in place is because we're going to go ahead and hold down Shift and Alt. And we want to just kind of select out a selection somewhat the same size as our um, cloud here. And we want to make it be uh, almost the same size, just a little bit smaller. And then you're going to go to making sure you're selected on this layer. You're going to go to Layer, Layer Mask, and Reveal Selection. Okay. And what that does is it creates a mask and it hides everything except for the selection that you just made. And we're then going to go ahead and minim uh get rid of that one, go back to this first layer, duplicate that. Let's go ahead and name this uh, main cloud. And I would name these layers, but we're going to be merging them at the end anyway, so it's not really a big deal. So we're going to go ahead and select this second one, do the same thing, but this time we're going to do it on this bigger uh, one here in the middle. And kind of like that. Go to layer, layer mask, and reveal selection. And again, doing the exact same step, we're going to duplicate that, and do the one over on this side. And they don't have to be perfectly aligned, they can be in a little bit different positions. Honestly, if it's, if it's not perfect, it's going to look more realistic and better. Um, not that we're going for a super realistic look, but you know what I mean. Duplicate it again, and this time we're going to go ahead and select a little bit bigger. And kind of select it like that, go to layer, layer mask, reveal selection again, and you can see here it kind of creates that nice swoop there. Duplicate this for the last time, and make it a little bit bigger than that one, and just kind of line it up the best we can like so. Go to layer, layer mask, reveal selection. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and put all of these layers uh, visibly here. And you can see here it's definitely a little crazy looking, but that's okay. We're going to go ahead and merge all of those layers together into one. Um, you can see there, now that's done, so that you can then hide the clouds like so. And now we're going to go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. And we're going to blur these a little bit. And just kind of blur it out. And the more you blur it, the more puffy it's going to basically look. So maybe something kind of like that looks pretty good. Go ahead and control click the main cloud layer, hit control I, hit your delete key. Because you don't want any of the other stuff on the outside. And just like that, we now have some nice clouds created that have a little bit of pop to them. It looks really, really nice. Um, and we can also, you know, move that around. And one thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and just take the opacity on that down a little bit because it's a little harsh for me. And there you go. And just like that, we now have created our cloud. Now, I'm going to keep these two in separate layers, and I'm going to call this cloud blur because uh, you'll, you'll see why in a second. But basically, um, let's go ahead and, and keep working on this image now. Uh, one thing I'm going to want to do is uh, go ahead and duplicate this, hit control T, and I want to size this down and just kind of move it down over to here. Then I'm going to duplicate that and move it over to the other side as well. And let's go back to the main cloud here, duplicate that. Whoa, that's not what I wanted to do at all. My bad, people. That's the only problem when you get all these uh, main cloud and cloud blurs when I want. 
And I'm going to go ahead and size that down just a little bit less. I'll go ahead and kind of just place that here. Go back to these two. Get rid of that because I don't want that. And move that to the top. And the main cloud and cloud blur. Just kind of move it over to here. And actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and let's do this. This will actually be really cool. I just had this idea. Let's go ahead and take these. We'll, we'll size these down so that it's definitely it's a different size than the one on this side, but it's kind of out of its way. And take the main cloud and cloud blur, and we'll just size that down a little bit as well, kind of like that. And let's go ahead and grab a selection here, about like that. I'll then go ahead and use my gradient tool and I want to create a rainbow. So I'm going to go all the way to the very top and just simply click here and drag across. You can see here that creates a rainbow. I'll drag it up to the top with control T, drag it straight down and I'll also drag in the sides of this a little bit. And I'm going to end it right there into the cloud. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this to where it's below the cloud blur layer. And you can see there it's, it's uh, the cloud blur layer is kind of on top of it. And by doing that, I can now go to my eraser tool, go ahead and grab a bigger selection, and just kind of erase the bottom of that a little bit. And then with the cloud blur, I can go into my blur tool here, grab a big brush on that. And just kind of really blur that area there out a lot. Up that strength to 100. I just want to blur that out kind of like so. And the way that this rainbow looks is honestly not super retro. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. And I've decided I want to do a different take on it. But before I do that, let's go ahead and merge these clouds here, which are just our small ones. And you can see there the shadow on it changes a little bit, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and create a folder called Clouds. We'll drop all of these into there so that we can then create a new, call this Rainbow. I probably misspelled that the wrong way. Rainbow. All right, now what I'm going to do is simply create a selection here going all the way down about that wide there. Go ahead and use my paint bucket tool. What I'm going to do is go to my swatches, click on red, and just click in there. Hold down shift, click over a couple times till it's lined up right there on the edge. Grab my next color and repeat that process until I have my basic colors for the rainbow which this just basically gives me hard edges on that the rainbow color that I was already using and there we go let's use pink in there and we can go ahead and grab uh, maybe an actual purple color well that's that's pink and then purple I don't know if those should be next to each other, but that's okay. And then we'll go ahead and use let's go ahead and use this color blue as well on one of them. And I don't really like that. So, anyways, there's our rainbow. I'll drag that in the center. I'll keep it more more of skinny like that, um, and then drag it below the clouds completely. By doing that, I can then take the fill and just take that fill for the cloud down just a tad to where you've just seen the rainbow come through a little bit. And then I'll take my erasure tool again and I'll just kind of erase those edges like so. And you can see it just coming through on the edge there. It looks really nice and really sweet. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and create some text over here. Cloud, cloud services. And I can't see it, so I don't know how I'm spelling it. services we'll go ahead and space that out kind of like so 
go through some different fonts real quick, try to find something that looks kind of cloudy. Just something kind of smooth and just that'll just look really, really nice on there. And doesn't need to be perfect because this isn't really part of the tutorial, but There you go, that one there looks pretty good. We're going to make that color white. And I'll scale that down just a little bit. And there we go, now it's centered on both that end over here. And I'm going to go ahead and go to my main cloud. I'll copy this layer style. Go back to my text over here. Whoa. And I will paste layer style onto it. And see there, it kind of makes it soft. I'll go to scale effects. And just kind of scale that effect down for the cloud text looks kind of cool and then you can use something like the liquify tool to kind of just use it to whoa brush eyes a little bigger brush pressure brush that take that down a little bit It's just way, 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 way too pressure. So that needs to be down like way, way down. And I'm not sure why that's getting all messed up there, but. Hit OK on that. See, it kind of messes with it a little bit, makes it look kind of cool. Or you can leave it alone. Totally up to you. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this uh, lesson. There's only one last thing to do, and that's to create a layer on the very top. I, you can go to TextureKing.com, and I have this cool grunge texture here that I'm going to just paste in here. And then I'm going to simply drag it across like that, getting rid of the darker area. And then I'm going to go ahead and put this on the screen. And you can see there it kind of creates more of a retro look onto it. Go ahead and put the opacity down just a little bit on it. And just like that, you've created retro art. So I hope you all enjoyed this lesson. And be sure to like this video, comment, and also check out our uh, products at pixelforlife.com forward slash products. And let us know what you guys would like to see in the future. You guys have a great day. And God bless.